Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are we are here for the Survivor Series review. And is this truly the end of the Undertaker? Now, through all the build up to the Undertaker's farewell, for the longest time I was just sitting there thinking, you know. I want to believe that this is his that he's finally gone, but I honestly didn't buy it. All the build up to the Undertaker, I didn't buy. It. Okay, I didn't buy it, but I'm not one of those selfish wrestling fans, and I'm gonna say I was surprised that WWE actually did it. I'm glad that WWE actually did allow Undertaker to finally retire. Because for the longest time, we've been... Us fans have just been wanting Undertaker to retire for the longest time. And every time we think he's retired, he comes back for another match. And another match. And another match. And another match. But... It seems like... Now, the Undertaker is gone. And listen, every time we think he's gone, he comes back. So I'm gonna hold my judgment on this for now. But I do honestly hope this is finally for good. I don't want to hear anything about Vince McMahon. Wanting Undertaker to appear at WrestleMania to have a match with somebody. Or he wants him at a Saudi Arabia show. That's the next thing we got to hope for. If the Undertaker is truly retired. If he's truly gone. I don't need to hear anything about him having a match at WrestleMania. Or him having a match at Saudi Arabia. To please the Saudi government. I don't want to hear any of it. This is the uh, those are the only reasons why I can't be fully convinced. The way they were sending him off, the way they were sending the Undertaker off, definitely felt like a real retirement. Showing all the promo videos, people from his past. There were a, a lot of people from the past, and the hologram of Paul Paul Bearer was actually pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. Like, they did act. They did promote this like this was finally it for the dead man. And honestly, I hope so. Not because I don't like the Undertaker. It's because it's just finally time for him to retire. Undertaker was definitely one of my favorites back in the day, but he just got less interesting as the years just went on. Because, well, he's gotten older. Like, it's always great to see The Undertaker. I had the honor. I, I've been alive for 25 years. Since the day I was born, for 25 years of my life, I never thought I'd ever see The Undertaker live. The Undertaker was here, at this, here in Australia two years ago in 2018 in the Melbourne Australia Super Showdown. For years, I never thought I would ever get to see The Undertaker live. Same thing with Triple H. I never thought I'd get to see that happen. I've been alive for 25 years and I never thought in my life I'd ever see The Undertaker. And it was awesome to see The Undertaker live. Personally see his entrance live in person. It's definitely... It, these kinds of things you want to keep in your memories forever. Whenever I talk about the Super Showdown in Australia, I talk about Buddy Murphy winning the Cruiserweight Championship. Seeing the Iconics. Seeing the Bella Twins. Seeing Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair, two of my personal favourite females on the roster. But I never... But, but I never talked about The Undertaker. 
because despite that, it was just really great to see him live. That's really all. It, that's really all I, I got from the Undertaker. Like it was just awesome to see him live. That's really all I could really say about seeing the Undertaker in person in Australia that year. So as a fan, I just hope this is really it for the Undertaker. And and and, and I don't want and I, and I am so damn upset that people are disrespecting the Undertaker. I've seen so many people on Twitter disrespecting the Undertaker and all, and because he's retired. I mean, I I don't want to go over it, but it's just it's just it's pathetic. It is pathetic of fans to disrespect The Undertaker. This man is a legend. This man is a legend, and you're going to disrespect him like that? I'm ashamed of all those people that did that. Every single person that disrespected The Undertaker, shame on all of you. So that's really all I've got to say about The Undertaker. Now let's get on to the the nitty gritty. Listen, this this was a fun, look, this was a solid show. I didn't mind Survivor Series, but there are some things that I didn't like. We had The Miz. He won the pre-show battle royal. Great. Why did he need why did he need this win? He didn't. Remember how they didn't count the pre-show for SmackDown at the 2018 Survivor Series? Apparently this year it counts. Apparently this year it counted to the total. Bullshit. The only reason why it counts it's because a Raw superstar won. I bet you if Dominic Mysterio or Chad Gable won, they would not have counted it. But I'm not going to talk about the pre-show. Stupid. So we're going to talk about the... the now we're going to move on to the main stuff. We had the main... We had the first match... I was about to say, who the hell is Omos? Omos is that big Jordan dude. Huh. I've actually just, I've got the results up, and I saw a name named Omos, and I was like, who the hell is that? And I realized it was actually that uh, big guy that's with AJ Styles. Big Jordan. So his name is Omos. <laughs> oh my god, that is a weird name. But anyway, we had AJ Styles, Keith Lee, Sheamus, Braun Strowman, and Matt Riddle. By the way, Keith Lee's got new music. And boy, oh boy, it definitely sounds a lot better than the shitty one they gave him. There we go. That's more like it. That's more like it. That Keith Lee music is much better. Sure, it doesn't top. The one he had in NXT. But you know what? It's it's better than his previous one. So I will give WWE thumbs up for that. Keith Lee's music, much better. Much, 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 much better. Then we had Team SmackDown of Kevin Owens, Jay Uso, King Corbin, The Messiah, Seth Rollins, and the Blue Collar Working Man, Otis, and... Raw basically wins. They, Raw basically won the whole thing. Clean sweep. No one getting eliminated. And I find that funny because Team Raw, they couldn't get along. All build. Team Raw couldn't get along. All build. And now here they are. Clean sweeping SmackDown. Seth Rollins was actually pretty funny. He just... Let Sheamus beat him. He just let he just got on his knees and just let Sheamus finish him. 
I, I, I'm guessing the only reason why Seth did this is because A, he didn't want to be in the ring with Matt Riddle. B, he probably realized he better get home to be with Becky Lynch. So he just said, he, he's like, I want, I just want to be with Becky Lynch. Just end me already. So yeah, Seth Rollins just, just lays down and lets Sheamus beat him. And I think that'll be the end of Seth Rollins for a while. I think that'll be the last we will see of Seth Rollins for quite some time. As he takes time off to spend time with Becky Lynch. As they get, as they prep for their newborn child. So yeah, Team Raw won. Who cares? Fun match though. But, but, a, but, fun match, but a very predictable outcome. Street Profits face the New Day. Big E was with the New Day. He's a traitor! Big E is a traitor to SmackDown. Big E is a turncoat. He's a traitor. He should not be with the New Day. I know they're his boys and everything, but New, but Big E is a SmackDown superstar. He is a traitor. But the Street Profits did get this win, and I'm very, very, very happy about that. Street Profits got the win. I'm glad they did. They deserved the win. They needed it. They needed it more than the New Day did. So congratulations to the Street Profits on getting a well-deserved victory. And it was a great tag team match. The Street Profits are up! And we want the smoke! Good victory. Then we had Bobby Trashley take on Sami Zayn. Now, this match was probably the most boring match out of them all, and probably the most bullshittest match I have ever seen in my entire life. You mean to tell me that Bobby Lashley can't beat Sami Zayn on his own? Is that what you're telling me? Having MVP trip Sami Zayn over? You have Bobby La You had MVP on the outside trip Sami Zayn over. Bobby Lashley can handle Sami Zayn. Clearly he can handle Sami Zayn on his own. You mean to tell me. You are telling me that MVP has no faith in the CEO of the Hurt Business. The CEO of the Hurt Business, you know? He's a, you mean to tell me that MVP doesn't have faith in the CEO of the Hurt Business? To beat Sami Zayn on his own? What a joke! The Cheat Business! That's their name! That should be their name! They are the Cheat Business! Downright cheaters! Are the Hurt Business! Bobby Lashley is a disgrace! I'm not even from the United States, but every person from the United States should be ashamed! In how Bobby Lashley won the this match. All the people in the USA should be ashamed. Because Bobby Lashley is supposed to represent the United States with that championship. And you and, and they have MVP cheat. MVP cheats. By tripping over Sami Zayn, by just tripping him over. Give me a break. Her business? Bullshit. More like the cheat business. They are the lame business for a reason. Next we move on to the best match on the show. In my personal opinion. That was Sasha Banks versus Oscar. Sasha Banks finally defeats Oscar clean. I am super duper happy about this. And I'm so glad it happened. Sasha Banks needed a clean win over Oscar. Didn't matter if it was by pinfall or submission. Sasha just needed a clean win over Oscar because Oscar, Oscar has scored clean victories over Sasha Banks. And secondly, majority of their matches have ended by screwy finishes. So Sasha Banks finally defeats Oscar for real and actually pins her clean. For real. The Sasha Banks 
Revenge Tour is real. The Sasha Banks Revenge Tour is on is on is on its rails. Sasha Banks defeats Bailey twice, and now she beats Oscar. The train is real. Toot toot! Jump on jump on board the Sasha Banks Revenge, revenge Train! As, as we all see Sasha Banks defeat her past rivals and finally collect the debts that she thoroughly deserves. Can't wait to see Sasha Banks eventually beat Charlotte, beat Becky Lynch. She's beaten Alexa Bliss enough. She's beaten her plenty of times on SmackDown and Raw. So who needs, so why need revenge on her? And among other people. So jump on the train, guys. Boop, boop. So next we have the women's Survivor Series match. Oh god, here we go. I know a lot of you are, are begging to hear what I have to say about this one. Well, guess what? There was only one good thing about, about this match. And no, the answer was not Lana. The, the answer is Peyton Royce successfully pinning Bailey. That was actually the only good thing about, about, about this. Because Peyton Royce scored a clean pinfall on the on the former SmackDown Women's Champion, the role model. And I'm actually very happy about that. I'm actually very happy about that. Because it's great. It put it's great. Bailey puts over a younger star. That's a that's a positive. But everything else is a negative. Everything else about this is a complete negative. Yeah, it, 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 this, this, just, this was just stupid. The rest of this match was just complete and other stupid. You had... You had Shayna Baszler get herself disqualified, and this is the thing that pisses me off. Bianca Belair is like the only, is like the only person left, and, and like, it's down to like Bianca against Shayna, Nia, and Lana... So, Bianca's like the only one left, and you mean to tell me that you couldn't have Bianca Belair perform the comeback of the century? You had Shayna Baszler just get herself disqualified. Oh, that's typical of WWE. How do you get rid of, how do you get rid of, how the hell do you get rid of someone without forcing them to be pinned? Oh, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just DQ them. We'll just DQ them. It's a typical WWE trope. They always do this. Seriously, it, it, it's so stupid. Bianca Belair made a believer out of me, believer out of me, making me believe that she could have what it takes to overcome the odds and beat everybody. And that's what should have happened. I don't give a shit about this whole shit that's going on with Lana. What should have happened is 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 KOD to Shayna Baszler. One, two, three. KOD to Nia Jax. One, two, three. KOD to Lana. One, two, three. Bianca Belair single-handedly wins this match for Team SmackDown. But no, we can't do that. We can't have Shayna Baszler get pinned. We need to force her into getting herself disqualified by, by, just, by just not letting go of Bianca Belair when, when, when Bianca Belair reaches the ropes from the Karafuda clutch. And we can't have Nia Jax get pinned, so we got to get her counted out, as well as Bianca Belair. We need to have them both get counted out, just so that Lana can look like she actually she's surprised that she did something. Seriously, Lana did jack shit in this whole match. She did jack shit that this whole match. She just stood outside like a little child. She stood outside like a little goddamn child, acting like she did something. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! I won! Oh my god! Are you kidding me? Lana did jack shit that this entire match. She was told to stand outside by Nia Jax. And Nia Jax looked like a complete other idiot. You would think Nia would actually use her brain and force Lana to wrestle. Because she didn't trust her. If I were you, Nia, I would have just had Lana wrestle so she could get eliminated. And look. 
protects Bianca, yes! Bianca didn't get pinned, yes! It protects Bianca! But seriously, what does this gain? This gains nothing for Lana! She did jack shit! This entire match just standing outside like a little child that got put in timeout. Seriously, she it's like she it, seriously, it's like she was a child in, in, in timeout. Just sitting in the background, just watching everybody have fun. That's what Lana was in this match. Just a little kid who was in timeout while watching all the other kids have fun. Give me a break. This Lana bullshit needs to end. Lana is the worst! Lana is the worst! She's the worst of the worst! She ain't no best of the best! She's the worst of the worst! Give me a break with this shit. I'm not surprised. Literally, I'm not. SmackDown literally had the best team possible. SmackDown can have the great... Like, seriously. SmackDown could have the greatest team in the entire world. And they would still lose. Because, because, as, long as, because as long as Monday Night Raw is the flagship show, Vince McMahon ain't gonna, like, ain't gonna make you win. Give me a break. SmackDown will never, will never beat Raw in the traditional Survivor Series. Because Vince McMahon hates... Smackdown. Then we had Roman Reigns face Drew McIntyre. This match ended with a screwy finish. Now, I know a lot of you are probably going to be all like, Oh, Patrick, you, uh, you didn't like Bobby Lashley and the Hurt Business uh, cheating. Uh, you didn't like uh, the, when uh, MVP cheated. Uh, so uh, you shouldn't like uh, Roman Reigns cheating to beat Drew McIntyre. Do you know what? I don't give a shit. I did like it. You want to know why I liked it? Because Roman Reigns is a heel. He is supposed to cheat. He's supposed to cheat. It's the tribal chief. What do you expect from Roman Reigns? You expect Roman Reigns to play fair? Drew McIntyre shouldn't even been in this match. He was only, Drew McIntyre was only put in this position because, oh, it's heel versus heel. You can't do heel versus heel. Well, they just did with Bobby Lashley and Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn's a heel. Bobby Lashley's a heel. And you mean to tell me that they didn't make a babyface champion in that match, but they needed a babyface champion to face Roman Reigns? Get out of here. Get out of here with your, with your, with your bullshit excuses. Oh, they only did it because it's heel versus heel. Well, what did well what well, well why didn't they do the same thing to Lashley and Sammy then? Why didn't they have Sammy or Lashley drop their titles just for the sake of it being face versus heel? Give me a goddamn break! You know Randy Orton was screwed, and we all know Randy Orton got screwed. We all know Randy Orton should have gone on to face Roman Reigns. Yes, same thing would have happened to him, but at least I would have actually been happy to see my boy. Drew McIntyre shouldn't even been in this match. I, and listen, I like Drew. He's been a really he's been really good this year. But you cannot convince me that WWE did this just for face versus heel. But yet, because oh, you can't do heel versus heel. But yet they did that with Lashley and Sami Zayn. Give me a break. Sasha versus Oscar was face versus face. Nothing stopped WWE from making a heel. Women's Champion, Street Profits and New Day are both faces. Nothing stopped WWE from making a heel Tag Team Champion. So we can get heel versus face. Sure, face versus face are more believable than heel versus heel. But don't, but don't come at me with the shit of, Oh, WWE only gave the title to Drew McIntyre because it's heel versus heel. Well then, Sami Zayn or Bobby Lashley should have dropped their titles. One of them should have dropped their titles because of the fact that their match was heel versus heel. Don't give me that! We all know 
why Randy Orton was screwed. Roman Reigns won by technical submission. Jay Uso got involved. Jay Uso got involved. Roman won. Because he's the tribal chief. LOL, Roman wins. People did that a lot when he was a face. So I guess I will do it now. LOL, Roman wins. <sighs> well, there you go. That was your Survivor Series. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, my little mini rants. Because I know you guys really like those. Or hate those, depending on your ferrogate. And uh, if you guys did enjoy this, hit that thumbs up. Comment your opinions down below. Please sure to subscribe. I would greatly appreciate that. And make sure you turn your notifications set to all. So now you'll be notified when my next video comes up. Or whenever I decide to do a live stream. Which is nearly every day except for Raw and Smackdown days. And pay-per-views if there's ever a pay-per-view on. But thank you all so much for joining me. And I'll see you all next time.